Hello and welcome to the channel. So today I wanted to show off the work I've been doing on a mini console based on Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi. So this project all started many months ago when I created this. So this is a portable screen for use with my laptop. So this makes use of a Adafruit uh, HDMI pack, pack, the 5 inch one, and I designed the 3D printed this custom case for it. The main features of this case are that it has this lid that allows it to, uh, the screen to be protected uh, when in transit so I don't need to put it in a protective bag or anything and you have your brightness switch down here. The other feature is that I wanted it, wanted the screen to be at the same height as my laptop screen when, when gaming so my laptop I put on a little stand that raises it about 10 centimeters and as such I designed this to have this mechanism that allows it to raise up the so that the bottom edge here lines up with the bottom edge of the laptop screen when it's on the stand. So I made this and you can find the files linked below on Thingiverse if you're interested and I was playing around with it and kept coming back to this configuration and I immediately as you can see there I put my thumbs there partly because I'm holding the screen up because it's quite flexible as you can see but also that got me thinking well what if there were actually buttons here and this is where the whole mini console concept came from so I decided to go for a two-piece design of having the controller and the con console be separate things. Now, the console is very much in uh, work in progress. So, in terms of the structural design, here's what I've been going for. And this is designed to fit this electronics in. So you see I've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W here with an audio hat and it's got this arrangement of headers such that the balls get flipped 180. On the audio hat we've got a set of volume up, volume down buttons, a, um, a little amplifier for use with this speaker and a mute for the speaker. So the main reason I wanted this was so that you could have headphones in handheld mode. And I know there's ways you can add a headphone output to the Pi Zero W itself, but this just seemed a bit easier overall. On the left side here, we've got uh, an Adafruit power boost for doing the power and battery management, which uses two batteries here, which are 1,200 milliamp hour, but wired in parallel. And this power is both the the Pi and the hat plus a USB hub here. So I wanted a USB hub so that because the console was being made, I wanted the console to be its own separate thing. I also wanted the possibility for you to be able to plug four controllers in and have it in more kind of, again, a standalone mode, in much the way of saying that the monitor's standalone. So this USB hub is here and you've got two ports on the front, one on the side here and one on the rear. And there's this additional circuitry on a strip board for dealing with safe power on and shutdown. The intention is all this will fit in here. And you can see that the way I've designed this is so that the batteries will fit in there. Um, so it won't actually feel in your hand as thick as it will be because your fingers will contour around it. And you see that the idea is that this will clip on the back here. Now I say clip, I'll come back to that in a moment. But yeah, that actually feels fairly nice to hold. Yes, I'm still dealing with having to hold the screen up, but I'll figure that out at some point in the future. So with the cons with this being the console, I also wanted the controller to be a separate thing. So this is what I've designed. And it was designed with the with several purposes in mind. So on one hand you've got the actual controls for gaming so you've got d-pad face buttons plus a few other ones 
but there and also you've got the uh, a keyboard and these analog sticks for other uses so for the desktop and such the keyboard in this case is taken out of an xbox 360 chat pad and these analog sticks are a different ones in the middle here we've got a, a an oled screen that shows information about what's going on i'm using this mainly for debugging at the moment but it will have a use in the final system so internally within this we've got a, a arduino compatible microcontroller specifically the teen clc so the teen clc is a 32-bit microcontroller that has a fair number of uh, uh, digital analog inputs and outputs but the main reason i'm using it for this is that it has HID support. That me mean, that means that it can be programmed as a keyboard, a mouse, and controller. At, in fact, at the same time, and the, a computer or Raspberry Pi will just see that. So the reason I wanted this is so that a I didn't have to wire in any connections to the back of the Raspberry Pi and have some cable coming out to go to the controller and b so that i didn't have to any write any special drivers for that to interface in games because this will appear as a controller and keyboard and mouse the game the emulator should the retropy emulator should just be able to pick it up and uh, use it now i should say at the moment this is um not fully complete and so for example the these face buttons aren't actually wired up but the analog sticks and the the chat pad are. If I plug it in, you'll see it turn on, and we've got this little readout on the screen. And you see there it says no num and no caps. So it actually reads the state of the caps lock and num lock on your computer, and will display them on here. Also, when I start typing, the character that you've pressed appears in the middle. Now, that probably won't be there in the final version, but for debugging is actually useful because the chat pad communicate, is communicated with by the TNC over serial. So that's one mode, and then in this, in this keyboard mouse mode, this acts as a, um, as a mouse movement, and then this, the left one acts as a scroll movement. Now, if I flick the switch in the middle, it switches over to controller mode, and these act as analog sticks. And once these were wired up, these would act as your yeah, normal control buttons. But you see, you notice the design, and I designed it such that with the being as though the console's on the back, I wanted this to fit in the front. Oh. Thing. So you end up with this effectively sandwich of of components, and the idea is you play it like this. And well, before, like I say, I'm still need to figure out how to deal with that, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. Maybe some kind of brackets uh, based on this. And you may be wondering how well, how are these things going to fit together. Am I going to make a clip? Well, no. The the solution I've come up with that works works quite well in my my early prototypes is I've embedded magnets in the side of the controller here and here that when in here would it connect with magnets similarly. So you see, I've got an uh, indent here. Unfortunately, this is an older version, so it doesn't actually line up with this anymore but that would have magnets that line up that hold this in place. So you don't actually need any modification of this. The only modification I need to make on the lid is a cutout here for the USB cable. And that will be quite a sturdy thing, but then you can easily take it apart as you need. Also, because these magnets are in here and they've got the north and south, the idea will be that for transit, you can just attach these together once I've finalised the design for all the cutouts and stuff and this would be a single piece same as the monitor would be a single piece 
So if you didn't want to take the monitor, you could just take this, uh, the controller and a USB cable, hook it up to a TV and just play. So you may be wondering how would the monitor connect to the uh, to the controller? Well, you've got the HDMI and USB on the side here, and they're actually fine on the side, at least for use with the laptop, as I mentioned. But for the for the console, that's not ideal. So. To deal with to overcome that, I've developed this. So this makes use of uh, both the Adafruit and some non-branded DIY cable, uh, DIY FPV cables. So we've got uh, both HDMI and USB, and on the side with the monitor, you've got the full HDMI and micro USB. So if I just plug that in like so and then it goes into this uh, adapter piece that flips the cables 180 so that they go vertically, oh, 90 rather, so that they go vertically down and then when it's in handheld mode this would flip over and if I design, if I design this correctly this would clip in place um, leaving minimal thing and then this would just plug in so you may notice this has micro HDMI and full USB, which would plug into the micro HDMI on the Pi Zero and this USB port on the back here. So you'd end up with, if I reassemble it, something quite similar to this. Now, another feature I wanted was to also use the console with the monitor, but not have the have it more like a mini desktop experience. So for that, I've designed it such that you can have the monitor or the console. If I just move this out of the way, have the console like that. Undo this. Flip the, oh, flip the screen down, put that back in, and then do this and have this cable then go down and hook in. And because of this now being flipped 180, the ports still are lined up. Then you can use your controller oh, separately by USB cable plugged into the front ports. And this would all be powered off the batteries of the console. So that's a brief overview, or actually quite a detailed overview by this point, of my mini console. And yes, I realise it's not complete. Uh, and my plan is over the next two months to get the actual console um, CAD designed and finalise the 3D prints so that it will all actually fit in and be usable. Right, so, well, thank you very much for watching, if you've stayed this far, and I hope to give you updates on this project in the future.